guys, Go Hypey here. Today we're gonna be making agar slants. Here I've got my test tubes, and in this bottle, uh, my media bottle, I have 250 milliliters of grain soaked water. I cooked grains yesterday, so I thought I would save the water and use it for the agar. Uh, that should be nutritious enough for the mycelium to grow on. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna heat it up so that once I put the agar in, the agar powder dissolves a little better. So now our green water is hot enough. I didn't quite get it to under boiling, but it's like pretty hot as you can see it's steaming. So I'm just gonna pour it back into the media bottle. Okay, I have my magnetic stir bar, so I'm gonna throw that in there. And then here I weighed out five grams of agar powder. Um, this is the telephone brand agar powder. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've used different agar brands, it doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna add five grams to my media bottle with, again, 250, a little over milliliters of uh, oh, soaked water. Um, normally when I'm pouring agar plates, I'll have my media bottle filled up with 500 milliliters, uh, or half a liter of liquid water or green soap water, and then I'll use 10 grams of agar powder. Uh, if I'm not using green soap water, I'll do 500 milliliters of regular tap water drink Tahoe tap, and then I'll put in uh, 10 grams of agar powder and 10 grams of malt extract. Cool, so now that's in there. I'm gonna put it on my stir plate. Gonna get it started. This does the work for me. If you don't have a stir plate, um, I'm not going to get one because they're cool. And uh, if not, you can just stir it regularly. You can put like a little crystal or stone in there, but I also kind of don't recommend that because yesterday I had a uh, jar, a uh, liquid culture jar break because I had a little stone in there and I think it had a crack in it anyway from like cooling down too quickly, but then I was like stirring it and it cracked and I was like, oh no. Um, maybe we'll put some color in this too, so stand by for color. All right, I've chosen this purple food coloring that was in the house when I moved in from the last tenants, thank you. So, I'm gonna start just by adding a little drop. Come on. Oh, that was more than a drop. Oh, that's a dark color. Um, dark agar is good anyway. It helps you see contaminants or mycelium growth, contrast, it's pretty cool. What I'm gonna show you today is how we're gonna sterilize the whole test tube. Normally, uh, if I knew my test tubes were sterile, I wouldn't be pouring them in and then sterilizing. I would just sterilize my agar bottle and then I would pour it into my tubes in front of the flow hood. But these test tubes have been in storage for a little while, so I can't say that they're sterile. So we're just gonna sterilize them along with the agar. So let's talk about slants. Slants are used for long-term storage of mycelial cultures. I'm gonna be making some master slants with these. A master slant would be your best culture you've got, closest, that would be like your mother culture. And then, um, so mycelium degrades with every successive, like every time you do a transfer or like inoculation and you're, kind of spreading like the genetic line thin. And uh, so you want your mycelial cultures to be as close to the mother culture as possible. So that mother culture would be the clone you had taken it from or the spores that you had allowed to germinate and grow. Um, yeah, it's pretty important for keeping your like genetic library healthy. You want some healthy mycelium, healthy cultures. And these things, they can last for years. After you let them grow out a little bit, you would store them in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna pour this into here now. Oh, forgot my stir bar was in there. 
that one in too. Let's see how this goes. reason I'm not filling it up all the way is because this is gonna turn into a slant when it's cooling we're gonna set it at an angle kind of like that and that allows for more surface area for the mycelium to grow on okay so now I'm gonna place caps back on all the test tubes I am NOT going to screw them on tightly so I'll screw them on tight and then I'll crack it open a notch to uh, that allows for the contents of inside the test tube to be sterilized. Uh, you don't want too much pressure building up in there while it's sterilizing. It could be a bad time. So now all these caps are screwed on and they're screwed on quite loosely. So now I'm just going to cover everything with uh, some tin foil. And this is so that water doesn't get inside the caps while it's sterilizing. Ideally, you would have a uh, test tube rack, and you could, um, I don't know if all test tube racks are autoclavable, but ideally, you would have one that is, and then you could just put that in the sterilizer, but this is the poor person's technique, where uh, we just, we're just making do with what we got. I think a test tube rack will be one of my next purchases, but this is glass. Glass is fine to sterilize. The only thing you want to make sure of is that it uh, cools down slowly enough so it doesn't crack, as I mentioned before. So here I'm uh, filling my sterilizer, my, uh, my 23 quart pressure cooker, about halfway uh, to the height of the glasses, and that should be enough. And uh, I'm only going to sterilize for, we'll do 25 minutes. depressurized now. I uh, brought it in front of the flow hood. This is where we want to open it up. I'm going to make sure to open it away from my face. There's a lot of really hot steam in there. works quite nicely um, so it's just my rack I put it on an angle and it leaves good angle for the agar to cool down in the angle that we want it having the openings facing the flow hood screw that one on a little bit better the flow hood should be blowing sterile air in Still want these cracked a little bit until uh, they're totally solidified, and then we can screw the caps on tightly. Slants have been sitting here for about an hour in front of the flow hood, cooling down, solidifying. Um, there's some condensation in them. I'm gonna tighten up the lit caps right now. Some condensation. I'm not really worried about that, but um, yeah. So last thing we're gonna do. Uh, so either you can use them immediately and start doing some culture transfers or you can close them up just using some breathable parafilm here. I use this on all my plates and uh, tubes. So I'm going to wrap all these up and then I'm going to leave them out for a few days, make sure nothing funky is growing on them. And then I'm going to store them in the fridge until I'm ready to use them or I'll put a culture on them leave that culture at room temperature for a few days or incubation temperature, let it grow out, and then put it in the fridge for long-term storage. And that's it. 